Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the difference between gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. We're first going to talk about Darwin's idea of gradualism, the problems associated with it, the idea of punctuated equilibrium and the evidence that supports this. So gradualism is Charles Darwin's original idea of natural selection, that populations get small changes and gradually change over time. And these small changes are passed on from one generation to the other generation. So, for example, uh, horses over 50 million years have changed from one form that was fairly small at less than half a metre to the form that we have now. Uh, and there are a lot of these transitional forms in between those two. The problem is that these transitional forms are actually very rare in nature. Uh, so there's not very much evidence to support this gradual change. Generally, what we have is lots of one particular type of form, for example, the very small horse, and lots of the end form, the big horse, but with very few or no transitional forms between. Uh, so horses are a special case. So you can see here, uh, and looking at different types of fishes, uh, that we have one type of fish, so lots of those. Then we have very few of these different branches of fishes and then we get lots of those types of fishes again so we have this uh, we don't have these transitional forms or very many of these transitional forms so we get the theory of punctuated equilibrium which states that instead of this gradual change happening we have a period of rapid change followed by a period of stasis now we may get some of these transitional forms that occur during that period of rapid change or we might get none of them uh, this Punctuated equilibrium can be seen in the hominid evolution, uh, where we have numbers of our different uh, types of hominids. Uh, however, there aren't any of those transitional forms linking them together, or the missing links as we refer to in evolution. Uh, this punctuated equilibrium was first put forward by Niles Eldridge and Stephen Gould in 1972 and they made the observation that species generally appear very suddenly and then live for a period of time with very minor changes and then become extinct. Uh, so we don't see this evolution happening or this gradualism happening. Uh, which kind of makes sense because while the environment stays the same, there's no need for organisms living in that environment to adapt to the environment because they're already adapted, one would hope. Uh, also, uh, it follows that most new species evolve after there's a rapid environmental change, most of these rapid environmental changes causing a mass extinction event. So you can see in this diagram some of the different mass extinction events uh, where, which starkly destroyed the biodiversity. However, after that extinction event, we see this rapid increase in biodiversity. So lots of different things forming. Uh, so that is punctuated equilibrium. We have our rapid change followed by a period of stasis. Uh, and a good example here is the late Devonian. Uh, so you see this extinction event causing, or big change in the environment, causing rapid evolution, and then relative stasis from then on. In this video, we've talked about Charles Darwin's gradualism, that small changes occur over time, and these changes uh, add up on top of each other to cause evolution. The problem that we should then see many of these transitional forms, and we just don't, uh, moving to punctuated equilibrium, where there is rapid change followed by relative stasis and the evidence being that we have lots of fossils from the organisms before and after that rapid change during that time of relative stasis and if we don't have any uh, during the rapid change showing that that occurred over a very small period of time. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.